I'm in the coffee room where element 109, Meitnerium, was named. In here, imagine it, 20 people sitting around arguing, what are we going to call this new element? Writing the names on the blackboard. They rubbed it off, but there, they had the whole choice of what the elements were called. Like many other of these very heavy elements, Meitnerium is made by taking a nucleus of a heavy element and banging into it a lighter element. In the case of this one, you have lead with atomic number 82 and bang into it cobalt. Or alternatively, you can have bismuth, which has atomic number 83, and bang in iron, which has atomic number one less than cobalt. So you have two different ways of making the same element. I was just told by Sigurd Hoffmann, one of the discoverers, they chose the name Meitnerium because Lisa Meitner, who was the co-discoverer of fission of atoms, never got the Nobel Prize. Her collaborator, Otto Hahn, got the Nobel Prize. She didn't. Now, she's got an element named after her, and he hasn't. So her name will live longer than his. I think it'd be really exciting to choose the name of an element. Well, Professor, you're sitting next to a man who does get to name elements. This is your one chance to tell him what he, you think he should call any future elements that he might get to have a say in. Let's see what you're going to suggest to him. I think... I, I still think that it would be nice to, um, to honour Max Planck, and I also think that Plankium is a nice name. It rolls off the tongue. What do you say, Plankium? Will you give that one, will you bear that one in mind for us next time you have to name an element? I think now Plankium we can write in bold uh, letters because he already was on our list. Okay, there you go. Plankium might be in the running next yeah. time. You happy? Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Lisa Meitner was the first woman ever to get a PhD, a doctorate in physics in Austria. And then she moved to um, Berlin. During the First World War, she worked on a mobile x-ray unit for x-ray wounded soldiers. And then she worked in Berlin with um, Max Planck. And there's a very nice story that Rutherford sent radioactive samples to them by post from Cambridge. And she could tell when a parcel was coming from Cambridge before looking at it while the postman was still holding it because her Geiger counter started detecting radioactivity coming out of the parcel. People weren't quite so careful when they sent radioactive samples in those days as they are now. <laughs>